right? Go check out my stats. See how things have changed. Oh. Oh yeah, I got demonetized a while ago. That's fun. How long has it been since I've made a video? Oh. Alright, well, um, I did say I was gonna start making videos every week. Uh, huh. Well, though, Jeff the Killer, there we go. I remember that one. That's a, it's a classic, right? Yeah, a creepy face, jump scares popping up everywhere with that face. It was great. All right, let's read this. Excerpt from a local newspaper. Ominous, unknown killer is still at large. After weeks of unexplained murders, the ominous unknown killer is still on the rise. After little evidence has been found, a young boy states that he survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely tells his story. I had a bad dream and I woke up in the middle of the night, says the boy. I saw that for some reason the window was open, even though I remember it being closed before I went to bed. I got up and shut it once more. Afterwards, I simply crawled under my covers and tried to get back to sleep. That's when I had a strange feeling, like someone was watching me. I looked up and nearly jumped out of my bed. There, in a little ray of light, illuminating from between my curtains, were a pair of two eyes. These weren't regular eyes. They were dark, ominous eyes. They were bordered in black and just plain out terrified me. That's when I saw his mouth, a long, horrendous smile that made every hair on my body stand up. The figure stood there, watching me. Finally, after what seemed like forever, he said it. A simple phrase, but said in a way only a madman could speak. He said, Go to sleep. I let out a scream. That's sent him at me. He pulled up a knife aiming at my heart. He jumped on top of my bed. I fought him back. I kicked. I punched. I rolled around trying to knock him off of me. That's when my dad busted in. The man threw the knife. It went into my dad's shoulder. The man probably would have finished him off if one of the neighbors hadn't alerted the police. They drove into the parking lot and then ran towards the door. The man turned and ran down the hallway. I heard a smash like glass breaking as I came out of my room. I saw the window that was pointing towards the back of my house was broken. I looked out it to see him vanish into the distance. I can tell you one thing. I will never forget that face. Those cold, evil eyes and that psychotic smile. They will never leave my head. Police are still on the look for this man. If you see anyone that fits the description in this story, please contact your local police department. Jeff and his family had just moved into a new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Jeff and his brother Liu couldn't complain though. A new, better house? What was not to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of their neighbors came by. Hello, she said. Hi, Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and to introduce my son. She turns around and calls her son over. Billy, these are the new neighbors. Billy said hi and ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jeff's mom, I'm Margaret, and this is my husband, Peter, and my two sons, Jeff and Leo. They each introduced themselves, and then Barbara invited them to her son's birthday party. 
Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said that they would love to. When Jeff and the family were done packing, Jeff went up to his mom. Mom, why would you invite us to some kid's party? If you haven't noticed, I'm not so dumb kid. Jeff, said his mother. We just moved here. We should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. Now we're going to that party, and that's final. Jeff started to talk, but stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his mom said something, it was final. He walked up to his room and plopped down on his bed. He sat there, looking at his ceiling, when suddenly he got a weird feeling. Not so much a pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it as some random feeling. He heard his mother call him down to get his stuff, and he walked down to get it. The next day, Jeff walked downstairs to get breakfast and got ready for school. As he sat there, eating his breakfast, he once again got that feeling. This time, it was stronger. It gave him a slight, tugging pain, but once again, he dismissed it. As he and Liu finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there, waiting for the bus, and then, all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over them, only inches above their laps. They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the hell? The kid landed and turned back to them. He kicked his skateboard up and caught it with his hands. The kid seems to be about 12, one year younger than Jeff. He was wearing an Aeropostale shirt and ripped blue jeans. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It looks like we got some new meat! Suddenly, two other kids appeared. One was super skinny, and the other was huge. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there is Keith. Jeff and you looked over to the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that you would expect a sidekick to have. And he's Troy. They looked over at the fat kid. Talk about a tub of love. This kid looked like he hadn't exercised since he was crawling. And I, said the first kid, am Randy. Now, for all the kids in this neighborhood, there is a small prize for bus fare, if you catch my drift. Liu stood up, ready to punch the lights out of the kid's eyes, when one of his friends pulled a knife on him. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I had thought you would be more cooperative. But it seems we must have to do this the hard way. The kid walked up to Liu and took his wallet out of his pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. Now, it was truly strong, a burning sensation. He stood up, but Liu gestured him to sit down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give me back my bro's wallet or else! Ray put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out his own knife. Oh, and what will you do? Just as he finished the sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nose. As Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Randy screamed, and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff. But Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground. Keith lashed out at him, but Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground screaming. Troy rushed at him too, but Jeff didn't even need the knife. He just punched Troy straight in the stomach, and Troy went down. As he fell, he puked all over. Liu could do nothing, 
but look in amazement at Jeff. Jeff, how do you... That was all he said. Then, they saw the bus coming and knew they'd be blamed for the whole thing. So they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and the others. As Jeff and Liu made it to school, they didn't dare tell what happened. All they did was sit and listen. Liu just thought of that as his brother beating up a few kids, but Jeff knew it was more. It was something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was. The urge to just hurt someone. He didn't like how it sounded, but he couldn't help feeling happy. He felt that strange feeling go away and stay away for the entire day of school. Even as he walked home to the whole thing near the bus stop, and how now he probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore, he felt happy. When he got home, his parents asked him how his day was, and he said, in a somewhat ominous voice, It was a wonderful day. Next morning, he heard a knock at his front door. He walked down to find two police officers at the door, his mother looking back at him with an angry look. Jeff, these officers told me that you attacked three kids, that it wasn't regular fighting, that they were stabbed. Stabbed, son! Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his mother that it was true. Mom! They were the ones who pulled knives on me and you. Son, said one of the cops. We found three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise on the stomach. And we have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Now, what does that tell us? Jeff knew it was no use. He could say him and you had been attacked. But then... There was no proof it was not them who attacked first. They couldn't say that they weren't fleeing, because truth be told, they were. So Jeff couldn't defend himself or Liu. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it, since it was him who beat up all the kids. Sir, it, it was me. I was the one who beat up the kids. Liu tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. The cop looked at his partner, and they both nodded. Well, kid, this looks like a year in juvie. Wait, says Liu. They all looked up to see him, holding a knife. The officers pulled their guns and locked them on Liu. It was me. I beat up those little punks. Have the marks to prove it. He lifted up his sleeves to reveal cuts and bruises as if he was in a struggle. Son, just put the knife down, said the officer. Liu held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put up his hands and walked over to the cops. No, Liu, it was me. I did it. Chef had tears running down his face. Ha, <laughs> poor bro, trying to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police led Liu out to the patrol car. Liu, tell them it was me. Tell them I was the one who beat up those kids. Jeff's mother put her hands on his shoulders. Jeff, please, you don't have to lie. We know it's Liu. You can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the comp car speeds off with Liu inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulled into the driveway. Seeing Jeff's face and knowing something was wrong. Sean, what is it? Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were strained from crying. Instead, Jeff's mother walked his father inside to break the bad news to him as Jeff wept in the driveway. After an hour or so, Jeff walked back into the house, seeing that his parents were both shocked, sad, and disappointed. He couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought of Liu 
when it was his fault. He just went to sleep, trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days went by, with no words from you at JDC. No friends to hang out with. Nothing but sadness and guilt. That was until Saturday, when Jeff is woke up by his mother with a happy, sunshiny face.